Hi everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small. Today I'm doing another retro gaming video. This time I'm looking at Rivet Wars Eastern Front. Maybe this might be considered cheating. This game was released in 2014 as a Kickstarter. And it was actually, I think, the very first Kickstarter I backed. It's when I discovered Kickstarter. And uh, I really liked it. Jake was a lot younger then. He thought it was really cool. And uh, I thought I would share it with you because lately I've been playing with my daughters and uh, painting some of the figures and having a lot of fun with it. So I thought I would show this off as a retro gaming uh, episode. So Rivet Wars Eastern Front, as you can see, has very kind of cartoony uh, graphics. And that's kind of the theme of the game. This was released under the Cool Mini or Not Super Robot Punch label. Um, but you can kind of see they're almost like little chibi type guys. They're shaped like rivets, hence the name of the game. So it's uh, pretty cool. You can still find these on sale um, on Amazon, at least the base game. A lot of expansions came out as part of the Kickstarter. You might be able to find those in various places on eBay. But uh, uh, overall it's, it's pretty fun. I think on Board Game Geek this holds a current rating of uh, 7.0 and it uh, deserves it in my opinion. All right, so we can check out the back. In here we get 38 highly detailed miniatures, a rule book, stat, uh, stat cards, dashboards, action cards, secret mission cards, double-sided tiles, tra Tracking tile, bunker markers, strategic objective markers, minefield markers, tank trap markers, razor wire markers, 12 flag tokens, 5 gas plastic tokens, 4 victory plastic tokens, 24 damage plastic markers, and 6 six sided dice. And you can kind of see here um, how it's laid out. The best way I could describe this game is it's kind of like a um, almost like a real-time strategy game and how it plays. And I still have some decals. Let's get to the cool part, the miniatures. So these are the miniatures that actually come uh, with the game. and. since I flipped everything over. I did paint some of these and uh, some of these my family painted. But we can kind of see, let me see if I can find just a regular old plastic one. So there's two factions in, in here. There's the, uh, the allies and the blight and basically they're steampunk stand-ins for the allies, I guess that's not very original, or the uh, uh, Germans. It has a very World War I um, steampunk vibe, but the models are actually pretty cool. So this is a Blight walking tank. Um, it has a pretty cool system where you see this plug on the top here. You can upgrade this unit by adding a, a plug to it. So by default, when you purchase it in the game, it comes with, with nothing and then you can, you can add, sorry about that sound, you can add extra things to the, the top. So, for example, you can add a, upgrade it with a machine gun turret or a special character. And you can see they have little plugs. And each guy you add, or weapon, obviously gives this unit um, different uh, features. Okay. Uh, you can see some of the infantry, they're very cute. Jake really liked the Blight when he was little, so he um, played them almost exclusively. I did paint up a lot of the allies. Let's see. So this is a painted version of an allied guy. You can see they actually are pretty darn cute for being 
homicidal. Here is a character. I love to sit down and paint the whole set, but uh, it does take a lot of a lot of time. It's kind of like a armored suit with the Captain America shield I painted on. And here's the walker. Here is a uh, Blight Trooper with a Panzerfaust. So, uh, overall the game it itself is pretty simple. It plays like a real-time strategy game in that every turn you get X number of points and you get to purchase uh, whatever you want with those points. So you might get points that can buy uh, infantry, or you can spend them on more expensive things. Things like this guy, um, you know, this guy require the use of, of rivets as well, which is another form of currency. It's like manpower and steel in another game. Then you have uh, the boards themselves, which are pretty cool. I'm flipping this over to show you this. I made a mess of everything. Consider that worth it. All right, here we go. So basically, they're two-sided. You might have a trench. You might have open ground. You might have a mix of both. There's different scenarios. Uh, you might have objectives and bases where you start, or bunkers and things like that. Um, and you can have up to four of these single units in there, or like one giant unit in a square, which is pretty cool. And then in the basic game, you get things like uh, like this. This is uh, the basically it's eight unit cards all put together to make it easier to see. Oops, sorry about that. And then that plastic just really gets loud on camera. But here you can see like these are the the blight, and um, I'm not. This isn't a how to play, so I'm not going to describe how to play. But just give you an idea of uh, the the concept. You know, each guy has the ability to uh, affect um, different classes of units. Every type of unit has an armor level. He has one pip of armor. The mono wheel has two pips of armor. The Sturm Panzer has three pips of armor, and so on. Depending on the armor of your target, you roll a certain number of dice. So this Panzerfaust rolls three dice against armor two units, two dice against armor one units, but only one die against armor one units, which are other infantry. And kind of show you the rock, paper, scissors, the allied rifleman, he rolls three dice against armor one, but he rolls zero dice against all the other armors, so he can't even hurt a mono wheel or a stern panzer and the game is like that it's full of counters so if you see on your opponent's turn he slaps down a bunch of mono wheels and they're going to be coming at you then as the allied player i'm not going to build riflemen because riflemen can't even hurt them i'm going to look at something else if the blight spam a lot of panzerfaust guys because they're cheap and whatnot uh, then I might spam riflemen. If the allies spam riflemen because the Blight have a lot of infantry, well then the Blight might deploy machine guns and so on. So there's a really interesting um, mechanic there for um, back and forth in the game which is really cool. The other thing I like is the uh, the scoring. You, you score points, you get um, you know by capturing things like objectives, there is one thing I don't like, which is the uh, they're like secret mission cards, and those add a little bit too much randomness to the points. So, you know, normally in a normal game you might play to ten points. So here you might play to ten points, but you might have a, a secret mission card that gives you two points for something super easy or, or 
you know, you might get a couple of those and just jump right ahead and win the game, whereas your opponent might get saddled with something that's super hard to accomplish. It almost reminds me of previous edition of 40k with the um, the objective cards, which was not a mechanic I was a fan of, because if you got like capture this objective or hold this objective and they were all in your deployment zone, you would just rack up points with no skill or tactics or anything involved. Secret mission cards are um, the, the same concept, so I'd recommend not playing with them or instead of giving them victory points, maybe give them some kind of bonus, a house rule of some kind. So, you know, that's a basic look at Rivet Wars. The other thing is too, beyond the base game, which I love, and the base game is very much a standalone. You can play the base game and enjoy it and not need anything else to have a good time, but there are a lot of expansions, so in this part of the video, let me show you. So here are just some of the Kickstarter things I received. Um, and we can see, I think this is the biggest unit for the Blight. And it's got two plugs, so you can upgrade him in lots of different ways. You, know, you can put this machine gun turret in there. Maybe this crazy scientist guy. So there's lots of different things. You get a little car. And so there's all kinds of fun things. They even have a lot of pop, pop, pop culture references, for example. Here's like their take on Red Skull, if you will, or someone like that. Red Baron. It did come in red. I was going to paint this so it's actually primed. Uh, so there's all kinds of, of fun things in the box. Um, the allies, similarly, have a lot of cool things. A drill come up out of the ground. So one of my favorites looks like a M3 Lee medium tank from World War II. And it has two spots for plugs as well. Things, these were in like the heavy metal expansion. And you got these robots that are punching with their extendo fists. So there's a certain amount of uh, whimsy in the game and it's pretty cute. They also have a lot of characters that can be used by both sides that again have the pop, uh, pop culture reference. Here's the treasure hunter, which is your Indiana Jones stand-in. This guy, your Rambo stand-in. Rosie the Riveter. Uncle Sam. Some of these guys I haven't finished painting. I don't know, some anime girl. Maybe this was from Sucker Punch. That was about the same time this game came out. So you can imagine there are lots of cool stuff. There's like a Australian kind of themed minor character. Uh, but again, you don't necessarily need any of those to enjoy the game. You can get the base game. I think it's still like 50 bucks on Amazon. It has almost 40 miniatures in it and it's a lot of fun. It's also a great introduction to uh, younger folks. He's still probably around 10 or 12 is what I'd recommend as the age. Um, but it introduces a lot of wargaming concepts that will be handy if they decide to, to follow up in wargaming. And it's also video game-esque enough that um, it, I think it could hold uh, younger kids' interest and teens. Those, those guys who have been playing video games and you want to kind of get them into board games are interesting. I think this is a good kind of transition game because it plays an awful lot, lot like a real-time strategy game. So, all right guys, there you go. That is a look at Rivet Wars. A kind of a retro, not quite super retro, but a retro game that in our house we really enjoyed. And I do want to paint more guys now that I pulled all this out. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do consider giving us a like and subscribe. Also, um, if you like our Flames of War content, check out our Patreon. Click that bell to receive notification when we release new content. As always, thanks for watching, and keep on gaming.